dollar, dollar, dollar. Dirt and money, no soul. Had to go and get it, ain't no time to kick it. Got a stack of flip for my foes. Dollar, 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 dollar. Please tell me you can hear me. Don't turn your back and don't declare me. Just let me know if you need me. Dollar, 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 dollar. Let me watch out for my partners. Keep my money long, get my team strong. Let me run away from my problems. Yo, what's good, original crew? It's your boy DJ New Kid, your girl. Sierra We're back on the channel with another Kid and C Original. Welcome, welcome back to the show, man. We got a good one for y'all today, man. We got top 10 disturbing interviews with evil people. If you had an opportunity to have a conversation with one of these serial killers in the past, who would you want to have? Mm. Like, if you could have been like, whether they mm. dead, or, dead or alive. Oh, okay. Uh, I was I was always intrigued by um, not intrigued. Let me not say that word. Um, I guess you could say. Oh, okay. Well, I probably would probably be like the Zodiac killer. Mm. But don't nobody I, know who that is. But don't nobody know who it is. <laughs> and I think that's probably why I was like, because I just would really like mystery. to yeah, get in your head. Like, why did you do the things be, that you do? Why did you? Huh? I don't know who mine would be. Ooh. You used to who? Go. No, I don't know. What are you about to say? I don't know. Oh. But I wanna know who you think I'm talking about. It used to be in I've been in a tree with a lot of people. I'm but with that being were. said, before we get into it, make sure you check out the links in the description box down below. You already know where to go if you want to further support. It's always checked down below. But again, it's top ten disturbing interviews with evil people. So with that being said, you wanna go ahead and get into it? Oh, also before we get into it, salute to the comment of the day. Mm. We appreciate that, man. Yes. <laughs> salute to the comment of the day. Mm -hmm. But again, it's top 10 disturbing interviews with evil people. Let's go ahead and get into it. Let's check it out. Let's see what's about. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Maybe mine's will be on this list. I don't know. Today, we will be looking at some of the most disturbing interviews ever recorded with people that have done horrific things and show no remorse. From an interview with a child who has tried a number of times to kill her family, to an interview with famous serial killers. I'll be discussing these and more only on today's top 10 list. Starting off this countdown, we have Eileen Wernos. Eileen Wernos is often considered the first female serial killer. She was found guilty of killing seven men. She would murder them, rob them, and then drive home in their cars. Although she claims every murder was self-defense. In our interview, we can see how lax she is when talking about killing. Just, just shot in self-defense, boom, boom, boom. You know, they weren't cut up, they weren't sliced up, no OJ jazz, you know. And he said, I did the most horrendous crime in the whole wide world. Death and murder. Did she should really say some OJ? <laughs> <laughs> she said no OJ jazz. <laughs> come on. Like like yours is even like come on now. Literally doesn't face her at all. In fact, she claims that what she did wasn't even bad. Yeah, she tries to justify her actions by saying she just shot them, as if that's not a big deal. But you've been convicted of killing seven men. Everybody's looking at the number. Does that not you? You killed well, seven men, seven strangers. Does that not make you a serial killer? So I didn't kill them every day, did I? Again, she's acting like her oh. killing seven men isn't a big deal. Like, oh, it's just seven men. People have done worse. It's crazy. Moving on to number nine, we have the Night Stalker. Richard Ramirez, otherwise known as the Night Stalker, was an American serial killer and robber who killed 13 to 16 plus individuals. At his trials, the judge stated that he never showed any remorse for these doings. I think the creepiest part about his interview is when he admits to being evil. Do you admit to being evil, Richard? We are all evil in some form or another, are we not? Yes, I am evil. Not 100%, but I am evil. And we see him try to justify his killings by saying the government does worse things to people than what he has done. Serial killers do on a small scale what governments do on a large one. He will be a good, you know so. good interview. I, I remember watching the documentary on Netflix. I like to talk to the little nice stop, but not little nice stop. But I like to talk to the nice stop, you know. Cause nah, he his was very aggressive. His his would be a good one, but he. Hey, um, you gotta know how to handle him. I, I really, they are not a say product not, of the <laughs> times, and these are bloodthirsty times. Even psychopaths have 
emotions if you dig deep enough. But then again, maybe they don't. In our id spot, we have Edward Edwards. Edward Wayne Edwards, otherwise known as the Hook Man or the Man with the Hook, was an American con artist turned serial killer. In fact, when he committed his long list of crimes, he never wore a mask because he wanted to be famous. In 2010, he did an interview and confessed to all his crimes. Again, it makes me so uncomfortable listening to how killers took someone's life. Taking his hand, he's going through the bottom of the duffel bag trying to find the cigarettes. And I'm standing right here, uh, and I have the sawed-off shotgun, and I ease it out of the bag while well, Danny's down there looking, and I... He's just too calm so talking about all... The hook killer, I thought they was talking about, like, and I was like, I was going to say, is this the dude, the reason why they made, uh, I know what you did last summer, because you know he was killing with the hook? Yeah. I thought, but yeah, he too calm for me, Like, bro. that is so disturbing. Yes. Yeah. During the interview, he also stated that he wanted the death penalty and thinks that he deserves it. Written, I want the death penalty. You don't want us to be in prison for a long time on, on everything else. They don't. Right, I got all, I'm, I'm, I'm not a healthy man. In our seventh spot, we have Paris Bennett. During an interview with Piers Morgan, Paris Bennett, who at 13 years of age, killed his young sister, admits that he did this as a way to punish his mother. Specifically wow. in the end, yes. to cause your mother maximum pain. This has achieved your goal, wow. which was to effectively mean your mother lost both her children at once. In 2007, wow. Bennett convinced their babysitter to leave early and then proceeded to stab his sister 17 times. It's such a tragic case. What makes it worse is how he pretends to say he loved his sister. In the interview, he was asked to describe why he loved his sister and he couldn't. Because I love her. I love her with every fiber of my being. They say it's like asking a colorblind person to describe the color red. They can't do it. He can't describe love because he can't feel it. Exactly like she said, it's because Paris is incapable of feeling emotions. No guilt, no love, nothing. Moving on to number six, we have Angela Simpson. Right. You, you murdered this man. Yes. You tortured him. Of course. This is an interview with killer Angela Simpson. She was arrested after torturing and killing a man in a wheelchair for snitching. During this interview, she tells exactly... She actually looks crazy I in feel her like, eyes. I don't know why I feel like I remember her. I think I know her, though. I haven't seen a picture of her. I don't yeah. know. What happened, how she did it, and why. The scariest part is how forward she is about this all. She doesn't care that she's going to prison or that she killed someone. Uh, you're not here to pretend to be remorseful. Of course not. Why would I do that? Are you remorseful? Not at all. She's not remorseful at all, and she's very open about everything. To my house, walked him down the street. I don't know why the media acts like the mother couldn't walk. He walked very well. Walked him upstairs, kicked his ass. Like, imagine being okay with taking someone's life. This interview sends shivers down my spine just listening to her and watching the stillness in her body and the calmness in her voice. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Manuel Vela. In 2016, a 28-year-old man, Manuel Vela, was arrested after killing his girlfriend and their unborn baby. In this interview, you can tell that Manuel suffered from schizophrenia. He claims that the father told him to kill his girlfriend and her baby. Keep in mind, he is the father to her baby. And then he says that he is the antichrist. And that's where I cut her open, when he told me to. When he told you to? Uh, the father, it's just the same one who was to communicate with uh, Jesus Christ is when he was here. Although it seems like he is intoxicated during this interview, he is not. He's just experiencing hallucinations and delusions. In this interview, he also claims he would receive commands from outer space and extraterrestrials. A lot of people found this interview disturbing just because you can see how far gone Manuel is. He's no longer in control of himself. In our fourth spot, we have Arthur Shawcross. Arthur John Shawcross was an American serial killer in Rochester, New York that took the lives of 13 individuals. His first two murders were committed in 1972. He was caught for both and then sentenced to 25 years. But after serving 15 years, he was released on parole. That's when he continued on with the killings and took the lives of 11 different people. Wow. You get a, 
You get, wow. you get caught killing wow. 11 people. I mean, two people. Two people. Two, that's enough. Two people. That, two people. You should have been life in jail, but they gave you 25. And you, you got did 15, 15. And you went back to killing. To killing. And then you got away with 11 more before you got caught. That is ridiculous. His interview is creepy for a number of reasons. Do you remember killing her? Yeah, possibly. He gives me the chills. He's just twitching and his voice is just so unnerving. But it gets worse once he starts talking about his crimes. How did you kill her? Probably strangulation. How do you know when they're dead? How? I don't know, just do. You can see that he won't admit it directly. He says, maybe he killed her, and maybe she died by strangulation. It gets worse. Reach over my shoulder like this, right behind my neck, and I pull out a brand new machete. When she backed out, and I come up behind her. He's just a ruthless killer. In our third spot, we- He cocky with it, but I don't think he can necessarily remember each kill, because he didn't kill so many people. But some, no, some of them be so into they can they remember, remember every, every person, detail, every detail. But some can't, some can't because well, they start I'm mixing not, up. Well, have Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy was an infamous serial killer who was responsible for murdering thirty women. Although it's thought that this number may be even higher, he would often kill these women in brutal ways. In his interviews, he shows no remorse for his actions, and the calm tone of his voice is very disturbing. I can see how certain feelings and ideas developed in me to the point where I began to act out on them. Certain very violent and very destructive feelings. Throughout this whole interview, Bundy tries to gain sympathy from the interviewer and the audience. You can see how he's trying to manipulate your emotions, which is terrifying. A lot of people commented saying that Bundy is trying to act human in these interviews. He knows exactly what to say and how to say it to manipulate you. It, it was like something had, say, snapped, that I knew that uh, that I couldn't control it anymore, that these barriers that, that I had had been, uh, I had learned as a child, uh, that had been instilled in me, were not enough to hold me back with respect to seeking out and, and harming somebody. It's a huge reason why Woman tell you what it is. He's always had that same demeanor. Mm -hmm. That's how he got the women. Mm -hmm. He could. He, he knew how to charm the women, mm -hmm. get close to them, and then because it was repetitive. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Was so famous and had a huge media following. Moving on to number two, we have Beth Thomas. Beth Thomas was a young girl featured in a documentary titled The Child of Rage. At such a young age, Beth displayed psychopathic tendencies, including harming her brother on a number of occasions and trying to kill her parents. Her parents were terrified of her and her brother Jonathan's safety, as they should be. Take a look at her interview. What is your brother, why is your brother afraid of you? Because I hurt him so much. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what, at nighttime, what do your parents do to your door? Lock it shut. Mm, why do they lock it shut? Because they don't want me to hurt John. So on a number of occasions, Beth would go into her brother's room at night to try and kill him. On top of that, she used to steal knives from the kitchen to try and harm her family with. Wow. Big shot points. And what do you want to do with those knives? Kill John and Mommy with them and Daddy. That's not all. Here is her recounting the time she hurt Jonathan. And what happened to your brother? Tell me about it. His head hurt real bad, but his chin, he had to have stitches in it. Now, apparently, doctors deemed that she acted this way as part of her traumatic past. Now, it's said that after years of therapy, she is now a healthy adult. And in our number one spot, we have... That was weird. That was weird. A little child. And now she's just living a normal life with therapy. Therapy is very... Jeffrey Dahmer. I desensitize myself to it. I, I, he, yes. I, uh... I don't know about Jeffrey. He started as a child weird. 
I don't know, I went to great lengths. Between 1878 to 1991, American serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer murdered and dismembered 17 men and boys. He would pack the victims' body parts into plastic bags and bury them behind his parents' home. He would also take disturbing photographs of his deceased victims and keep certain body parts as souvenirs. He also had tendencies to eat the victims. This gave him the name the Milwaukee Cannibal or the Milwaukee Monster. Upon searching his home, police found albums full of pictures of body parts, and his place was filled with human remains. Before his death, Jeffrey had an interview with Inside Edition and other news channels. In these interviews, he shares gory details about the men he killed and why he did it. One time I brought this uh, young man back to the hotel room, the Ambassador Hotel. I uh, was just planning on drugging him and uh, spending the night with him had no intention of hurting him. What's creepy is how calm he is talking about all this. Like he's murdered so many people and shows no remorse, just like all the other serial killers on this list. I was handcuffed and uh, it, it was just the realization that there was no point in trying to hide, hide uh, my actions anymore. Hearing him say that he kept the dead with him as long as possible makes me sick. When police raided his house, they found heads were in the fridge and freezer. Two skulls were on display in the house, and they found a 57 gallon drum filled with decomposing bodies in his room. All right, guys, that was a pretty creepy video, so let's move right along to our comment shout out portion, you know, to try and. Wow. I, I already know about yeah, it. Yeah, I know about it, but every time I hear about it, it's just like. I know, I know how? almost everything about Jeffrey Dahmer. Is that weird? Well, you. No, I mean. At one point, I was at like one point, watching. He was him. like really into that stuff, and it was kind of. um it was scary. Look, creepy. Look, look creepy. I was like, what you trying to do? Because I was looking up. I, I used run. to look up Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> like Jeffrey Dahmer, I used to look up Ted Bundy. I used to look up. Uh, the DC killers, the sniper killers I used to look up. I don't know, it's just like I was trying to study and understand like why. Yeah. I don't think that people will really ever understand. Even even like the why? the Waco joint. I was kind of I intrigued, know. like mm -hmm. not intrigued, but Yeah, and I was trying to link the word because I don't it's not I was trying to link the Waco with the Oklahoma bombings mm -hmm. and the Col the Columbine, mm -hmm. all those are kind of linked as far as some type of motive, like linkage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But hey, all of it's crazy, man. Y'all let us know how y'all feel about it in the comment section down below. It's weird, man. But that Night Stalker one, I, I've heard of it, but you I didn't watch it on Netflix. Mm -mm. I watched it on Netflix. It's weird. Did you? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to watch it. Yeah, it's weird, weird. It's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. But y'all spam us up in the comment section down below. Let us know y'all thoughts and opinions down below. But as always, I do go for the name DJ New Kid. This is We are. We are, y'all.